Uh, the seven heavenly virtues as YouTubers. Listen, bro. I already knew he was gonna make a part two because uh, Cory Kenshin has to be there. PewDiePie has to be there. Who else did I say last time? I think that was it. And I was surprised that those two weren't in there, but his other list actually made sense. But anyways, this is by Ryan Pictures. Shout out to him. By the way, I am live on Kick. There will be a link to the original video down below. Go check that out. These are seven specific YouTubers who perfectly represent the seven heavenly virtues. And we're going to start off with uh -huh. the virtue. Of Wait, yo, Jack's at, bro, Jack's at the ground has to be there. Dashy has to be there too, I feel like. Charity. Charity is described as a willingness to help others and better the world, no matter the cost of one's personal self. Yeah. Jacksepticeye is a perfect example of charity, especially when taking into account his annual thank me stream. Yeah. Inspired by Markiplier's charitable acts, Jack decided to follow him and join his friends' fundraising streams for charity. In 2016 and 2017, Jack organized events like his Crisis Text Line fundraisers, eventually making charity work a significant part of his own content. His first ever holiday charity stream started in December 2017, where he yeah. organized two charity streams Bro, for- Bro, and he kept doing it year after year and i remember cory pulled up i don't know if it was to one or maybe two of them and oh man yeah bro cory deserved to be on this lineup too but hold on bro this is jack's turn what bro hold save on. the children which managed to collect over two hundred sixty thousand dollars. although these were some of jack's first ever charity streams they quickly gained traction and virality throughout the next year jack continued his charity work by hosting a stream for the american foundation for suicide prevention yep. in this stream through the viewers and other content creators generosity jack was able to reach their goal of fifty thousand only 40 minutes into the stream too easy are we seriously gonna hit the 50k goal in the first in the first hour. His audience loved his charity streams, with many people leaving comments, sharing stories about how thankful they were, how proud they were of Jack's charity work, and that his positive outlook on the world had ended up changing their lives. Jack yeah. would go on to run another charity stream that same year for the Depression and Bipolar Support Alliance. And for the year 2018, he raised over $1 million, with one of the highlights being Whoa. the Thinkmas campaign he ran for Crisis Tax Line. In 2022, Jack was able to reach the goal of $10 million in only 10 hours, what? and was able to collab with- What? Oh, maybe this was a collaboration. But yeah, bro, from 260k one year to a million to 10 million. The World Central Kitchen, allowing them to prepare over 3.5 million meals for people in crisis all over the world. What? Every year, not just in 2023, Jack would significantly step up the quality of his streams. In only seven hours, Jack was able to raise over $6 million. Oh my God. Really, Coca-Cola? Actually, nah, it's still a charity. I can't talk like this. Really, Coca-Cola? 75,000? You let other people beat you, Coca-Cola? <sighs> Couldn't be me. That's amazing, though. Matt Pat was in there, too. Uh, Anonymous, MG, and Jack. Damn, 300,000 by himself. Oh my god! Unlike some influencers who openly boast about their charity work online for the sake of publicity, Jack Septicai chooses to keep his acts of kindness humble. Good. Because he never advertises himself as a perfect person Good, or a savior. Bro. His work shows us the importance of kindness for its own sake, rather than for the sake of social media and validation. But Thank you. That's exactly what I was gonna say, bro. If you're gonna if you're gonna donate or whatever, why would you put like why do people have to know about that? Like if you really wanna do that, donate, then donate because you want to. You feel me? Like, seeing on oh. the needs of others without seeking recognition, he shows a deep sense of integrity and authenticity in his philanthropic efforts. Oh, what yeah. Jack's fans have also noticed about these charity streams is how truly thankful he is for the donations his viewers have made. With him honest and genuine kindness is what makes Jack a perfect example of the virtue of charity. Jack's down-to-earth nature and authenticity make him very similar to Vsauce, who is our YouTuber Yo, that best Vsauce! represents humility. Humility is described as being modest and free of pride or arrogance. It means that one doesn't oh need to prove their greatness God, to the outside. Bro, his videos were so amazing back in the day, bro. Hey guys, Vsauce here. Damn. World to actually be great. This is what best describes a science YouTuber Vsauce. He's best known for his viral mathematical, scientific, or philosophical videos. Bro, one back in the day, I really thought, so it was Bill Nye, and then for me, it was this guy. I thought this guy was actually the smartest person ever. Because, bro, like he said, like the, the mathematical and all that, he would put some insane calculations, and his videos were always interesting. It was like answering questions that, that you wouldn't think to ask, but then when you hear it, you'd be like, oh, wait, what? What is this about? Best showcases humility. Never heard of him? Yo, King. Yo, bro, for real, bro. Nah, bro. Come on, man. 
is what I'm saying. You be on TikTok, bro. Get off TikTok. How he presents complex topics in a manner that's easy for viewers to understand, regardless of their educational background. Despite his deep knowledge for various subjects, he never comes across as condescending or superior to his audience. He invites viewers to explore ideas with him, creating a sense of shared discovery rather than lecturing like a college professor. In the video titled The Science of Awkwardness, Vsauce incorporates research from various fields such as psychology, sociology, and neuroscience to explore the concept of awkwardness. Despite the complexity what? of the subjects he covers, Vsauce communicates with his audience in a down-to-earth manner. He uses relatable examples, analogies, and humor to make his content and engaging and accessible to viewers of all ages. Facts. This approach shows how he prioritizes connection and understanding over showing how smart he really is. Vsauce is one of the oldest creators on YouTube, with him having started his channel back in 2010. Until this day, Vsauce still continues to post videos with the same quality, all while showing the same humility he had at the beginning of his career. Yeah. In a similar vein, MatPat also has a oh, channel focused oh, on sharing knowledge. Wait. Dog, bro. I don't know why I haven't seen some of his videos. I should watch some of his stuff on stream. I mostly like do it off stream, but bro, same thing. These are just like amazing things. The film theory, game theory. Yeah, we should we should watch them. Yeah, W Map Path Facts. I don't know why I'm not watching him on stream, bro. His videos really cook in an easily understandable manner. However, he best fits in the virtue of diligence. Diligence is described as being determined in work, no matter what tries to stop you and if there's work to be done, you'll do your best to get it finished properly. Known for his YouTube channels like The Game Theorist mm -hmm. and Film Theory, Matt Pat yeah. embodies the heavenly virtue of diligence through his dedication to in-depth analysis, meticulous research, and consistent content creation. Matt Pat's videos dive deep into various aspects of gaming, yeah. film, and pop culture. He applies his critical thinking and analytical skills to dissect complex narratives, game mechanics, and cinematic universes. His thorough analysis often uncovers hidden details and theories that enrich the audience's understanding of the subject matter. His most popular video is an FNAF theory video, which has garnered over 30 Yo, million. the five nights at Freddy's. All right, chat, we have to finish this game, bro. At least the first one. I'm on night four. It's getting too hectic, bro. I can't, I can't lie, man. I can't lie views since it was posted nine years ago. In this video, he examines <laughs> various aspects of the game, including its FNAF, storyline, bro. character motivations, and underlying themes of fear and survival. Before presenting his theories and analysis, MatPat conducts extensive research to gather relevant information and evidence. He explores source materials, interviews developers or creators, and consults academic sources to support his arguments and theories. MatPat pays close attention to detail in his videos, carefully examining clues, easter eggs, and subtle references yeah. within games, movies, movies, and TV shows. He investigates almost every aspect of the content he analyzes, often uncovering connections that may go unnoticed by casual viewers. Let's go back to his FNAF video. Throughout it, MatPat conducts a thorough analysis of FNAF's gameplay mechanics, drawing connections between in-game events and psychological theories of fear and anxiety. He explores the game's narrative elements, piecing together clues and hidden details to construct a compelling theory about the true nature of the game's horror. Despite hey, the time there we go, and that's the thing too. He's talking about the true nature the true nature of the game's horror meanwhile when i'm playing it i'm not thinking about all that i'm literally just okay here are my cameras let me look at the cameras and make sure i don't get jump scared that is what the game is to me but with him how he goes in depth with everything it's like yo i didn't even realize that or thought to even think about that so Required to produce high-quality videos, MatPat maintains Matt a consistent Pat. upload schedule, or at least he did, across his channels. He releases new episodes Maybe regularly, Pat, demonstrating Pat his dedication Ora. to his audience and his commitment to delivering engaging and informative content on a timely basis. Overall, MatPat's unwavering commitment to thorough analysis. How dare you, Astro? My fault, I keep pausing. You see what he said? You know the video is boring when you gotta look at your phone. You wanna know why I'm looking at my phone, mister? It's because I'm streaming. And what did my girl test me? Text me? She said, I miss you and I love you. Shut your ass up, bro. <laughs> bro, you lucky you a mod. Yo, hold on. Hold on, real quick. I got two goofy all mods here, Astro and Bella. Mm-hmm. I might have to consult the rest of the mods and see how they feel about you guys. Mm -hmm. Especially that Bella character we keep talking about. Mm -hmm. We're going to see how long that mod lasts. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Analysis, extensive research, and consistent <laughs> content creation exemplify the virtue of diligence in his work as a content creator. I'm and joking, I'm YouTube, joking, I'm joking. Which is a bit like PewDiePie, who has consistently been posting content on YouTube since the early 2010s. Yeah. However, yeah, PewDiePie w also PewDiePie. fits the heavenly virtue of chastity. 
Chastity, also known as purity, <laughs> most commonly refers to the quality of refraining from I'm sexual joking, activity I'm joking. that's considered immoral or any sexual activity altogether. It also means complete fidelity to a husband or wife during marriage or to have a partner that would always find a way to support you. PewDiePie, also known as Felix Schellberg and his wife Marcia Schellberg, are a perfect example of chastity. Wow, they really had Marcia a baby. And PewDiePie first crossed paths bro, in 2011. Bro, we, bro, we saw him, like we saw them get together. We saw them grow old. And now they have a baby, bro. Man. And That's when Marcia's close friend recommended watching PewDiePie's videos, Marcia immediately fell in love with PewDiePie's personality and humor, which made her want to connect with him on Facebook, with wow. the online chats quickly leading to a meaningful long distance relationship. Living in different countries caused many challenges, with PewDiePie in Sweden and Marcia in Italy. Damn. Despite the distance, they maintained bro, their bond. I do long distance state to state, they doing country to country. I don't know. I can't. I can't, bro. That's insane how they did it, man. That's amazing. In different countries caused many challenges with PewDiePie in Sweden and Marzia in Italy. Oh Despite my the God. distance, they maintained their bond through daily phone calls and video chats. After a year, PewDiePie managed to gather up enough money to visit Marzia in Italy. Wow. Their chemistry was instant and they've remained inseparable ever since. It was also during this time that PewDiePie would get caught in some of the worst controversies of his career, <laughs> with Marzia always remaining by his side. Shit. On January 11, 2017, PewDiePie posted a video featuring two oh. individuals from Fiverr holding a sign with an offensive message reading to all Jews is a social experiment to test their boundaries for money. Oh my god! Some That's what it was! <laughs> This spread widespread backlash, leading PewDiePie to post an apology. Oh However, my god! Also downplayed the outrage. Wait, so it kind of all connects? Why, de why the whole thing about demonetization started? He posted that, right? And then didn't Another video after that, he wore a, uh, you know, those Germans, uh, outfits or am I bugging? Leading PewDiePie to post hey, an hey, he said that word too on the bridge. Oh my God. However, he also <laughs> has the outrage, framing the stunt to shock humor rather than malicious intent. I want to address the biggest issue first, which I think is the whole, uh, guys holding up the sign thing. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it. It's been everywhere. A lot of people love the video and a lot of people didn't and it's almost like two generations of people arguing whether this is okay or not but regardless of that i just wanted to reiterate that my intention was to just to show how stupid the website is <laughs> and how far you <laughs> just laughed a little bit <laughs> this is okay or not but regardless of that i just wanted to reiterate that my intention was to just to show <laughs> how stupid the website is and how far you can push it by paying five dollars i'm sorry for the words that i used uh as i know they offended people and I admit that the joke itself went too far. A month later, the Wall Street Journal yeah. accused PewDiePie of anti-Semitism. Yeah, and Maker Studios, that's... which was PewDiePie's network, responded to this news by breaking their contract. Yo, he lost PewDiePie everything. would also fall into a subscriber war with the massive Indian YouTube channel called T-Series. Oh, and this was so wholesome, bro. The entirety of the YouTube community and Mr. Beast, not Anthony, uh, Mr. Beast, um, uh, What's it called? Like, he was showed support and everything. This started out lighthearted. He would soon fall into another controversy. On the 15th of March 2019, a PewDiePie fan would livestream himself in the Christchurch Mosque in New Zealand, said, Remember lads, subscribe to PewDiePie, before carrying out a deadly attack that took <gasps> the lives of 49 people. Oh my in response, god! PewDiePie tweeted his disgust after having his name associated with the attack and oh offered my. condolences to oh those affected my. by the tragedy. Throughout all of this, Marzia remained by his side despite all the controversy he was a part of. In fact, the both of them would continue to date for two more years before they would eventually marry in 2019. Even PewDiePie fans of noticed how strong the two's relationship have been over the past oh few years. God. From thousands upon thousands of fan art featuring the two, to reddit submissions and PewDiePie subreddit praising their relationship, it was always obvious to the internet that the both of them have a very healthy relationship. It was only this year that PewDiePie announced that he and yeah. Marcia were having a son, and PewDiePie's audience quickly celebrated this, making plenty of posts congratulating them. Wow. I'm keeping a secret from you guys. And that is... Oh, he moved to Japan. Gonna be a dad. Oh. We found out that Marcia is pregnant first in November, and I'm just so thankful. However, there was also a very loud minority on Twitter making offensive tweets about PewDiePie's son, some even going as far as to... What are y'all doing? PewDiePie and his baby can go bankrupt for all I care? It's so incredible funny that people are still hating on PewDiePie for something that happened years ago. 
What? Wait. Nah, this is why Twitter's crazy. Why can't y'all just celebrate? Most likely contender for Antichrist. I hope PewDiePie baby come out looking ugly. What? Why though? What is wrong with y'all? Wish Marcy would have a miscarriage. The what? rest of these tweets have been deleted. This caused some drama on Twitter with PewDiePie's fans hopping onto the platform to defend him. PewDiePie never saw nor acknowledged all of this drama because he had stopped using Twitter years ago. Good. His son was delivered safely and he and Marcy are having the time of their lives, living together in Japan with their son and enjoying Pew's retirement. Kindness is the act of being helpful to others without expecting anything in return, mm -hmm. not for personal gain, but purely for the benefit of the person being helped. Corey Kenshin is oh, an yeah. incredible example of this, who's known for his Let's Play videos, charity work, and down to earth. This is my YouTuber right here. Excuse me, I just took a sip of water. <clears throat> This is my YouTuber right here, bro. I ain't gonna lie, my eyes actually kind of got watery too, bro. This is the, this is the reason why. I mean, I always what was a content creator back in the day. I used to do Minecraft and all that as a little kid, you know what I'm saying? But this guy helped me push forward, bro. I ain't gonna lie, my glorious king. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But bro, come back, please, man. Earth nature. Corey Kenshin exemplifies kindness in various ways through his YouTube content and interactions with his audience. One way he demonstrates kindness Probably is the best comedian I've ever seen, by the way. uplifting messages in his videos. He often spreads positivity, encouragement, and kindness to his viewers, creating a welcoming and supportive community. In the often turbulent landscape of online platforms, he's carved out a safe space where viewers feel valued, accepted, and understood. He's also actively engaged in charities, using his platform yeah. to raise awareness and support for various causes. Whether it's organizing fundraisers for humanity, I was there. Aid, I was advocating there. for mental health awareness or promoting social justice initiatives, he uses his influence to affect positive change in the world. Because of this, one of Corey Kenshin's only flaws has to be the fact that he goes on breaks very often. Since mm -hmm. 2011, he's had a total of 13 hiatuses, each yeah. on and off, with Corey always returning after breaks that can span from two months to his most recent hiatus lasting up to seven months. Damn. Now. Corey has also played a major Nine part months in now, calling no? on YouTube for unfair video or monetization removals, which he explains in his video, YouTube racism and favoritism. In this video, he talks about his experiences with YouTube age-restricting a horror Let's Play video he posted while the platform allowed other creators to post them. Yeah. You guys either play favorites, you are racist, Damn. or it's a mix of the two. Damn. These are the three options, YouTube. This would lead to plenty of other commentary. I'll YouTube admit though that uh, YouTube is very inconsistent with things because I, well, we've uploaded certain things um that the original video doesn't get hit with even if we censor it or whatever we still get hit with those stuff and then i remember when our whole channel got taken down for nonsense bro youtube themselves admitted it they were like bro we're sorry here's your channel back they took off all the uh the strikes or whatever it was which is great i like that they did that they acknowledged that they were wrong or like the system messed up and our channel was clear but yeah even like for example even with like copyright stuff so we reacted to like some some anime stuff the hood hood uh, jjk video so the original video was up not copyrighted nothing monetized i believe and then i uploaded the reaction to that i um covered over certain scenes and it was still like massively copyrighted by the people over in uh tokyo or whatever and yeah that's why people have been asking like yo where's hood uh jjk yeah bruh I can't post it. And Let's Players speaking in Corey's defense. Now, before getting into the specifics of the situation, I'd like to say, I think most people have been aware of favoritism on YouTube for yeah. quite a while. Yeah. You know, it's not exactly like the Krabby Patty secret formula. It's not hush hush. I, I think everyone has recognized that there is some level of favoritism on the platform. I mean, there's even that viral video from a few years ago where the CEO of YouTube said to Juice World that they need to pump his numbers up, which indicates artificial growth. It means that they have at least some capability of boosting channels, whether that's through the algorithm and pushing it to more people or just inflating it themselves for channels they deem worthwhile and good for business. And the inverse is likely true where they can hide channels they think are problematic and bad for business. This lack of controversy has meant that Corey has had no drama featuring him. He's never been canceled and he holds a clean track record on YouTube. Good. Due to this, there are often plenty of YouTubers always trying to start drama or attempting to cancel him just for what? a few views. Privileged crybaby? Hypocritical fan base what Jesus. diverse groups does you're too much of a fucking 
prick you you think that it's all in the guise of being fake nice and that they're really racist and they're they wear their ku klux klan hoods on the on the inside and that they do all this just for a facade i don't get it man but despite this Corey doesn't respond to any of these videos he even tells his fans not to send any hate or to fight on his behalf wow, what in fact Corey Kenshin calls his fan base the samurai because he wants his fans to always get kind noble and courageous Additionally, Cory Kenshin's kindness shines through his humility and authenticity. Despite his immense popularity and influence, he remains grounded and approachable, never losing sight of the values that define him. His willingness to share personal struggles and vulnerabilities fosters a sense of solidarity among his audience, reinforcing the notion that kindness knows no boundaries. Mm. Kindness and patience are often correlated to one another, but there is a small difference between them, especially when George Janko comes into the picture. Oh, George wow, Janko's experience yeah. with the Impulsive Podcast, oh, particularly yeah, his nice. departure, reflects his embodiment of the heavenly virtue of patience. Patience involves steadfastly working- Yeah, do you, do you guys know what happened to him? To George? He basically got kicked or I guess decided to move from the Impulsive podcast, which is good because Logan and that other guy, Mike, they just weren't not a good influence for him. He's also like religious and Logan kind of made fun of him and his religion, which is crazy. And then he went and did his own podcast, obviously started off pretty small. And of course, you know, Logan, and I'm pretty sure like other people started laughing at him. Anyways, he kept the consistency going, kept the kindness going, kept the patience going. And eventually he ended up landing a podcast with um, Pat, 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 Dave, Dave, I think. He's great, by the way. And then through that and just, you know, meeting other people, he ended up landing another podcast with uh, Andrew Tate, which is actually one of the best podcasts out there which is pretty dope you don't have to believe in religion but disrespecting it is crazy exactly wow anthony thank you for the gifted but yeah i've always had my eye on george i'm not gonna lie i really do like his podcasting style and how he mixes religion in there um yeah i think that's pretty dope no cap w gifted thank you mr beast towards goals enduring trials and calmly awaiting results without frustration or anger despite facing challenges and discomfort within the podcast environment george's departure was not sudden but marked by subtle clues over time yeah. initially george's relationship with the podcast hosts logan paul and mike malak seemed to be going smoothly however as episodes progressed tensions arose creating moments where george felt isolated and sidelined during discussions his attempts at humor and contributions often fell flat or were met with dismissive reactions from Logan and Mike. Even though George was often made the punching bag of these jokes or was ridiculed, he always tried to keep things lighthearted and tried to hide how these comments were actually affecting him. Again, showcasing his incredible amount of patience for his co-hosts and guests. A great example of this was when George shared a long monologue with their guest Dane Cook. The response from the viewers were pretty negative, with many stating that George talked too much about himself to the point where the guests seemed bored. Another episode that featured this was the one with comedian Sebastian Maniscalco. George attempts to make jokes multiple times, but most of them would fall flat. That. However, the tipping point of the entire situation came during episode 351 of oh, Impulsive. This was weird in this episode, see, bro. Logan welcomed comedian Bobby Lee as a guest, this was and as cringe, the podcast man. progressed, it became very obvious that George was being ignored by everyone. Later on, George would share a deeply personal story about his religious beliefs. Well, yeah, actually, uh, I don't really talk about it because I, I, I don't, I don't like to waste people's times. I, I'm very collective, so if I have an issue that's deep in my soul or whatever I'm dealing with. I'll go to people like my mom and dad, honestly, because, you know, they knew my whole life. They know my decision making. If I, I'll go to my friends, if I know I could get a good answer out of them. But if I know it's just going to be like, oh, no, I just made the room uncomfortable. But for two years of my life recently was the hardest years of my life. I gained 40 pounds of weight. Damn. I, uh, I was really honestly, if I was not Christian, I'd probably be suicidal. And it was really, really bad. I never told anybody about it. And it was pissing me off because it was the most exciting years of my life. I was getting everything I've ever dreamt about. Money was no longer an issue. Uh, not that it ever was even like, I would just couldn't understand why I got everything that I've ever prayed for, but yet I was so unbelievably depressed. Uh. And I never let anybody knew because I was always the guy who tried to make people laugh. <clears throat> but once I fixed my focus, everything changed. Yeah. When I was at Five Guys, I make that reference because I remember I, I do evaluate a lot of things and reflect. And when I was at Which Five Guys, it was simpler. It was uh, uh, me with my friends. It was just like with Bobby responding with a pretty offensive joke, effectively shutting down any attempts at a proper comeback from George. It was just a long monologue. He was just waiting. He was and, just... I was, and let me just say something. I loved what you were saying. It was just very long. <laughs> Gradually, George bro, receded into silence. he opened up to you, bro. Literally told you something that he never said to anybody. And your shit is, it was a big monologue. Bro. Uh, me with my friends. It was just like... 
With Bobby responding with Bro. a pretty offensive joke, effectively like, what is your problem? any attempts at a proper comeback from George. It was just a long monologue. He was just waiting. Was and I was, and let me just say something. I loved what you were saying. It was just very long. <laughs> Gradually, George receded into silence, allowing yeah, his fellow co-hosts to manage yapping. a conversation with Bobby. But it was up. only when Logan pointed out how quiet George was that he finally walked off the set. Um, there are certain... He, he is clocked out. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know, I know. George has been under a tremendous me, amount of abuse. No, no, George, George, George. No, no, stop, George, I want you over here with me. George, I want you over here with me. Chase him down. I have a question You find him. George, no, Nah, nobody want to be there, but that shit's weird. He, I try. I said this. he walked, and that's a first, and now we're going to have to deal with the fallout Mike, Mike, of this Mike, episode for Logan, the next two Mike, let me fucking ask you months. I swear to God, Bobby Lee, you fucking pissed off my co-host. He's probably crying in the driveway. <laughs> Ultimately, George chose to part ways with the podcast, yeah, a decision that, that, that was met with mixed reactions from fans and hosts alike. While some criticize his departure as unprofessional, others recognize the underlying issues of disrespect that led to his bro, exit. Bro, exactly. If I'm being disrespected, I'm walking out. I don't care how unprofessional that is. Fuck you, bro. We're all grown adults. Don't disrespect me. You're bugging. Well, George exhibited patience by remaining steadfast in his values and integrity, even in the face of adversity and criticism. George's journey underscores the importance of patience in maintaining dignity, seeking resolution, and ultimately choosing the path that aligns with one's values and well-being. Temperance is often characterized as emotional restraint or self-discipline, which is the skill of moderating desires, emotions, and attitudes. Ali Abdal really shines through as someone with an incredibly mature and balanced Wait, I feel like I've seen life, him before. work, and personal growth, making him the perfect example of the virtue of temperance. In his video, Day in the Life as a Doctor, Ali provides viewers with a glimpse into his daily routine as a doctor, YouTuber, and entrepreneur. Throughout the video, Ali demonstrates how he manages his time effectively to accommodate various commitments while also prioritizing self-care. I don't think I've ever seen he this guy before. He emphasizes the importance of maintaining a healthy work-life balance by integrating breaks, exercise, and social interactions into a schedule. Ali's videos often focus on productivity techniques and study methods. He practices self-discipline by setting that. clear goals, managing his time effectively, and avoiding distractions. This is what I need right here. Managing my time effectively, bro. I feel like I already know the answer, bro. There are times where like I'll cook, like I'll be cooking, and then I'm like, hmm, the rest will be done in 20 minutes. Let me go on my phone. And then I'll go on my phone and like scroll or whatever, and then it'll take me like 30 minutes. Then while I'm eating, I'm also on the phone. So instead of choosing a five to 10 minute video for me to watch while I'm eating, I decide to watch a 40 minute video. It only takes me five minutes to eat. Yeah, I have to finish this one hour video. So now I just lost an hour. Like it's, I don't know. It's always like the little things. I know what I have to do. Basically stay off my phone. But I think this is my hardest one. Managing my time effectively. Other than that, goals and avoiding distractions is, that's easy. But I guess the phone is a distraction too, but yeah. By adhering to productive habits, he maximizes his efficiency without succumbing to procrastination or burnout, which is made most evident in his viral videos like How I Manage My Time, 10 Time Management Tips. Ali Abdel's to commitment that. to balance, self-discipline, and emotional moderation makes him another great example of the virtue of temperance. He strives to lead a harmonious and fulfilling life while inspiring others to do the same through his thoughtful content and personal journey. That was a W video, you know what I'm saying? Um, those seven YouTubers are actually heavenly virtues for sure but yeah like i was saying corey had to be there pewdiepie had to be there completely forgot about jack my fault and um oh matt yeah and then yeah wait no this whole list cooked because even even um george had to be there whatever anyways dope video